Hi everyone. So in this video, I want to talk to you about something that is very, very important and something that is often misunderstood by accounting and finance students. And that is, why is depreciation considered a non-cash expense? What does that even mean, a non-cash expense? When we typically use the word expense, doesn't that mean that we spent money and therefore cash on something? Well, it turns out that depreciation is a special kind of expense that is a non-cash expense. And the reason why we incur this non-cash expense is because of something called accrual accounting and a particular principle that we follow in accrual accounting, which is called the matching principle. So let me illustrate using an example. So let's suppose you start a catering business. So here you are at time period zero and you decide to buy a van for $80,000. And this is the van that you're gonna use for catering purposes. Now let's suppose that the useful life of the van is five years. So this is an important point because what that means is that this van is a long-term asset. It's gonna serve you for multiple years. So when you spend this $80,000, this expenditure is not just gonna help you today or for the next year, but for the year after that and after that and so on. This expenditure is different from the kind of expenditure that you will be doing on say buying tomatoes and potatoes and all the different things that you will be using to make your dishes for catering purposes. Because once you buy the raw materials for your dishes, you convert them into a finished product, you sell it in the same year, and then you repeat that cycle. This $80,000 expenditure, on the other hand, is something that once you incur it, it's not going to be repeated. Rather, this is going to serve you over the long term. Now, one of the things that accrual accounting says is that you have to match the revenues with your expenses. What that means is that an expense should be reported in the same period in which the corresponding revenue is earned. Now you can probably see that that is going to be an issue when it comes to long-term investments like the expenditure in this van. Why? Because this van is going to help you generate revenue in year one, in year two, in year three, in year four, which means that you cannot expense this entire $80,000 today because then technically you would be expensing something today even though it's going to be giving you revenues in the future. You can't do that because that's not following the matching principle. What you wanna do is figure out what fraction of this $80,000 is helping you generate revenue in year one in year two, in year three, and that is precisely what depreciation tries to capture. Depreciation is just our way of figuring out what fraction of the asset did we end up using in a particular year. So as an example, if we say that we are depreciating this van over five years using something called the straight line method, what that really means is that we are going to be depreciating this van by an equal amount every year. Let's suppose that we are depreciating it down to zero in book value terms. That's not the important point, but let's suppose we are. And that means that the annual depreciation expense is going to be equal to $80,000 divided by five years. All that means is we're saying that we are using $16,000 worth of the van in year one, and then $16,000 worth in year two, and then year three and year four. So this is our quote unquote yearly expense associated with the revenue that this van is helping generate in a specific year. What is particularly important for you to understand is that by, by calculating depreciation, all that we are doing is figuring out how to account for this lump sum expenditure that we did today over the years. In other words, the $80,000 that we actually spend that actually leaves our pocket, that actually happens here at time period zero today. That money is now gone. But we cannot show this as a but we cannot show this entire amount as an expense on our income statements because we're not using this entire thing in any given year. Rather, in any given year, what we're using is the amount that this asset has depreciated by. So in the first year, that's 16,000. And in fact, in all the subsequent years, this is 16,000. These numbers can be different depending on how we are depreciating the asset. That's not the important part. The important part is that these $16,000 are not actually leaving our pocket at these times. All the money actually left here at time period zero when we bought the van. 
Nonetheless, when the time will come by the end of year one to construct our income statement, this is what we will do. We'll say, hey, you know, at the end of year one, we had some sales. So let's suppose these were $100,000. And then you will have costs. What are these costs? These are cost of goods sold. These are wages and salaries, maybe marketing expenses, maybe payments for utilities and rent. But these are all costs that I will call cash costs. And the reason why I'm saying these are cash costs is because with these costs, some actual cash gets spent. So let's suppose these were in the amount of $65,000. Right after that, you have depreciation. Depreciation is a non-cash cost. Again, why? Because all the $80,000 associated with the van got spent here. This is where the cash got spent. This $16,000 is just you spreading out how you're accounting for that expense. And so in the first year, you're going to say my depreciation was $16,000. In other words, you're just expensing a fraction of that $80,000 that you spent up front. So now this will help you get your earnings before interest and taxes. If you do the math, you will get that to be equal to $19,000. Now let's suppose your tax rate was 21%. And let's further assume that you have no interest expense. So earnings before interest and taxes is also your taxable income. This is just a simplification, but with a tax rate of 21%, you would pay 3,919 taxes, which means that your net income would be 19,000 minus 3,990, so about $15,010. You might be wondering, why am I doing all these taxes and net income calculation? Well, because when you look at an income statement and you see something like $15,010 here in the form of net income, the important thing to understand is that this is not actually representative of the cash flow that you generated from your operations. And the reason for that is because in order to get to this number, you actually subtracted $16,000, which was a non-cash expense. This cash never actually left your business. This is just you, again, accounting for the initial expenditure that you did. And so if somebody asks you, what is the cash flow that you generated from your operations, from selling and all the different costs that you incurred to facilitate your operations, you'd say, actually, it's not 15,010, it's this number plus this $16,000, which is a non-cash expense that I incurred. So technically, the cash flow that I generated from my operations was $31,010. In fact, in finance, this is exactly what we refer to as our operating cash flow or OCF. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning.